A warm welcome to all our viewers, to our series Natural Medicine. I have a real hero with me today, and this hero even has a solution to offer, in the case of osteoarthritis, a way of walking painlessly. And I'll show you in a moment. Stay tuned. We'll be there for you in a moment. So, welcome back. My studio guest is an entrepreneur. It's Karl Müller. He's not only known here in Switzerland, he's probably known halfway around the world. Welcome, dear Karl. Nice to have you here. Thank you, Alexander. Don't object. I know you say you are not a hero, but you are. And you just have to leave it at that because you've helped so many millions of people by teaching them to deal with their musculoskeletal system differently. And this is really a success that you just deserve. And this recognition remains, well, at least for me. Now you can talk again. Then I don't object. Dear Carl, the topic of osteoarthritis is a big problem that affects a lot of people. I think mostly in an older age, from 50, 60, right? Would you agree with that? Yeah, you, you could say that. Whereby the term osteoarthritis has and is becoming a term of fear and is consciously or unconsciously used as such to entice people into having an operation. There is no study that says osteoarthritis has to be painful. There's also no correlation between pain and osteoarthritis. There are many people who do not have osteoarthritis and are in great pain and vice versa. So you don't have to be afraid of osteoarthritis. If we take knee osteoarthritis as an example, in almost all cases, it is possible to walk painlessly immediately. And we'll look at that now. The topic of osteoarthritis is very important. It's a diagnosis, like you say, people are scared of. It's untreatable. But for orth orthopedic operations, as it's so often said, but the truth is that most operations can actually still be prevented if you change your walking behavior. And then we'll take a look at the picture you brought with you, especially the skeleton. May I ask you to say a few things? Yeah, we are built for walking barefoot in nature, as you can see on the left. The feet move very vigorously, move through this uneven natural soil. It's not always the same. Sometimes it's stone, sometimes sand, sometimes grass. The feet are built with around 30 bones and around 30 muscles for all kinds of surfaces so that they can adapt to the surface. But if in our civilized world we basically walk always and everywhere on flat ground, can we, sorry, can we get back again? Sure, sorry, I pressed the wrong button then the feet degenerate. They develop into a retracted foot. That's the right skeleton picture on the right. You can see the foot making a brief touch on the heel. And then it hinges down. Instead of, as can be seen in the left skeleton, the tibia muscle is activated first, then the whole muscle chain in the legs up to the trunk is tensed and the rolling, strongly rolling foot acts like a shock absorber for the knees. You can see the knees on the left of the left skeleton. If you compare them with the right skeleton, on the right there is a huge blow, and left it's very gentle, like balm. And that means if you get an osteoarthritis patient into this position to walk like the left skeleton, then the pain gradually subsides. It doesn't just gradually subside. In 98 to 99 out of 100 people, 
I've always experienced that if they very carefully, slowly walk in this way, like on the left, it works best on a soft, elastic surface. Not only soft, because when you walk in soft shoes, you become even more passive. That doesn't ask you to roll your foot. Mm -hmm. But if you walk on a, a mat that is soft and bouncy, for example, or you can try it on a, a thin mattress and walk gently, rolling your foot, you immediately feel no more pain because this stimulus, this lifelong beating stimulus, yeah disappears immediately, and in almost all cases, the pain is gone immediately. Now it's just a matter of integrating this pain-free experience into everyday life, that you walk like this every day, rolling your foot so softly and elastically that the feet act as shock absorbers for the knees. And then in one day you can walk painlessly, immediately. We'll see how that works later, but I think it's very important to tell about the right skeleton. We have our knees here, but also our hips. And then at the top of the neck, which are points that hurt a lot of people over and over again. Yeah, what the foot does, the knee does too. And what the knee does, the hip does too. When the knees are bent, it automatically causes the hips to bend forward. When the hips are bent forward, then there's also this pull from the head, which weighs between 6 and 8 kilograms on the neck, and ultimately tenses the whole spine. You can also see that the arm swing doesn't work, while at the left, skeleton, uh, a, a rotation in the thoracic spine, triggers the reactive arm swing. This doesn't happen on the right. And this can be remedied by powerfully rolling your feet from heel to toe by tensing the tibia muscle. Actually, that's where the cause is. Then I'd like to go straight to this slide that fascinates me so incredibly where you can see exactly, when I look at the left leg, how these blows come to the muscles. So the left leg, just the, just the left leg, you probably mean the right leg on the left picture, don't you? Uh, the left one, the Adidas shoe there, I, I'm not allowed to say that exactly. You can see the muscles there, can't you? On the left picture, on the right leg. Yeah, exactly, left picture. You know that the muscles control the skeleton. The task of the muscles is to control the skeleton. Be it in an arm movement, the same is of course with the legs. And now, if the muscles that control the knee, the movement of the knee, if they get out of control, for fractions of a second, you, you can see that, it really beats the muscles back and forth. Then you can imagine when the muscles lose control of the joint, in fractions of a second at every step, the whole day, that's after around 40 years of age, about 50 million blows. Although we didn't take a hard shoe here, it's a soft gym floor and a soft sneaker, and yet there are these blows. We have rectified this on the right by having a shoe, 
with something between the foot and the shoe, a soft, elastic, springy material that's important. Soft is no good. You can see that on the left. It has to bounce back. It has to bounce back because only when bouncing back, the muscles are activated automatically. You can see it on the leg. The muscles don't jump, right? They don't jump. On the contrary, because the fine muscles of the foot, lower leg and thigh are activated. And also the holding muscles, everything, the whole chain is activated due to the elastic, springy material. The, the right knee joint gets stability, becomes stable. If you don't get these blows anymore, the stimulus is gone, and in most cases, the pain is gone too. That means for the right leg, if someone has osteoarthritis and is confronted with these blows every day, the inflammation doesn't subside, but increases. And it just keeps getting worse and worse. It gets worse and worse. The cartilage breaks down more and more. Of course, it also has to do with nutrition. In an acidic environment, it breaks down even faster than in an alkaline one. But the movement is actually crucial. And with this movement alone, you can also build up the cartilage again. There's Wolf's Law of 1892 from Dr. Wolf, who found out that cartilage can, contrary to many opinions, be rebuilt through proper stress of the bone and cartilage tissue, then there is an improvement in bone density in the bone, and in the case of cartilage, it's rebuilt. It isn't the same cartilage, it is a different cartilage, but that's enough. It is possible. Yeah, it's possible. So I'll go one step further. Tell me, what do we see here? I also saw a man like this one on the left today, so, and he walked in the same way. Yeah, this is Yusuf Hassan Abdi, a minister from Kenya, who was attacked some time ago. He was operated on 32 times. Everything in his musculoskeletal system was broken. And after two years in a wheelchair, he walked like this, his doctor, his personal doctor in London, Dr. Andy Goldberg, he, he's very well known, one of the most famous surgeons in England, in London, sent him to us. So he came, like on the left, then we let him walk on a soft, elastic, springy mat. One would think that that would make it unstable. The opposite happened. Unconsciously, through this strong, rolling movement of the feet, he became more stable. He put the stick away all by himself and was able to walk more stably. You can see it very clearly. You can see that he limps a lot less. A huge success. Oh, let me go back again. The next, dear viewer, is a video message from Professor Dr. Karl Hecht, whom I know very well. I'm a big fan of his, and he's also an enthusiastic wearer of shoes that spring back, and we can now quickly get the statement on what he says about it. Even if the price is a bit high, I would say it pays off. I discarded all the other shoes I had and only have the Kyben shoe because I wear it from morning to evening. I wear it to lectures, so I also wear it when I'm standing. And that applies to the elderly as well because they need a soft walk and an elastic walk. And that gives you a more youthful feeling. <laughs> super nice, super nice. <laughs> yeah, uh, Professor Dr. Hecht is now, oh, I think, 97 or 98 years old. He turned 97 in February. He's been wearing these elastic springy shoes for seven years now, basically, anytime and anywhere. And he's one of many who confirm that... Of course, it is extremely pleasant when you no longer have to walk on hard floors, but when it suddenly becomes rolling, elastic, springy, 
And it's making the walk more upright, as, as you've seen with the skeleton. It's making the walk more upright and stabilizes stabilizes the joints. So completely logical. We can actually stop at this point with the topic of osteoarthritis, but you have brought another wonderful example. We've already talked about it. Here, you can see this difference in this slide right here. Boom, so it bounces back. Here we dive in. Yeah, and that's how it works. This foot with its 30 bones and 30 muscles. And this is really terrible, isn't it? Those blows, right, compared to this. And the foot acts as a shock absorber for the joints. The foot acts as a shock absorber for the joints, and if you only walk on hard floors in normal shoes, then there is a blow with every step, which, in the end, causes osteoarthritis and worn-out joints. I can't get enough of these beautiful pictures, because what I see here is so logical. In nature, we would have no problem. On mats, we would have no problem. But with these shoes, how we hit them and trigger these blows, Everything is so logical. You did well, I'm really proud. Swiss technology. But actually, it was created in your other home where you lived for a long time, where you saw it in nature. And you have already carried this technology out into the world from there. Yeah, I lived in South Korea for 20 years. And actually, I did not copy that from the indigenous peoples, but I noticed myself when I had my knee pain, my Achilles tendonitis, back pain, and walked on these soft, elastic, springy rice fields. The rice grows in the water, and after the harvest, or before the harvest, the water is drained. And then, when it gets a little drier, then this clay soil is where the rice was grown in. It's a bit elastic and springy. My pain was gone, then I thought, that rice field feeling, I really want to have that everywhere. I'm excited to see what's coming. I haven't seen all the slides yet. Unfortunately, we all know these pictures because, well, we all suffer from it. Yeah, unfortunately, many people realize too late that something needs to be done and that something could also be done. The only thing you know is when you have knee or hip pain or osteoarthritis that you should then operate. And I don't see that at all. I'm convinced that one operation will lead to the next and that you, first of all, it, it should walk differently. You have a quick immediate effect, but you have to train it well. So the automation, the walk has to be relearned. And then, of course, we have the aid with the shoes, but it's also just as important to to work on the patterns we have from everyday life, from frequent sitting, far too much sitting. The adhesions, you can see that people are all bent forward. You still have to work on that. That's why there are further measures, exercises, stretching exercises, because you get more and more bent. There are all kinds of stretching exercises. There are also good websites where you can do stretching exercises. I'm actually even more of a fan of integrating exercises into work rather than doing exercises separately in the morning and in the evening. For example, the Asian squat. That might be the next slide. No, that's completely different again. Let's have a look at this then. Yeah, I might get back to the exercises later. I also integrated a lot. I bought a standing desk and worked standing up. That is one possibility. Standing on a soft, elastic mat, then maybe not all day long in the beginning. If you can do it, it's not a problem, but it is possible that when switching between sitting and standing, if 
changing too quickly, that will result in tension in the lumbar vertebrae area, then you have to move a little while standing up, or just sit for a maximum of 20 minutes every now and then. You have these shops all over the world. Are the staff qualified that they can show a few exercises in addition to the right footwear to customers? Yeah, of course, our shops are not shoe stores or mat sales outlets, but our staff are trained to show people alternatives to surgery. And they know exercises, they can guide you how to learn to walk, what you have to consider when changing from sitting to standing. Because there can be initial reactions, of course, and we also work with physiotherapists and doctor's offices. So for every viewer who says, I don't want to take the path of cutting and operating, I have to be able to solve it differently, they would have actually come to a different method, which is totally logical and makes sense to me, and could actually find help out of their need there. Yeah, in any case, they also need instructions, because the change, especially when you're older and have adhesions, when the fasciae are already sticky, when you have shortenings in the muscles, it's important that you know the whole concept, that you're not only buying a product, but also know how this can be integrated into everyday life. They have to do it. I may remember a statement from you, but it may also be wrong. Isn't it possible that people can somehow test the shoe? Yeah, you can try the shoes for two weeks. Do you have trial versions? We have trial shoes that are disinfected. You can give it back without hesitation. You don't commit yourself to anything. If you have the feeling that this is doing nothing for you, then you have the opportunity. You can test it for two weeks. Yeah, two weeks, for free, outside, anywhere, and you can return them. Uh, by the way, one possibility to integrate the system is, of course, also in, in the chair. To sit differently. Oh, please, let's leave it at that. It's unbelievable. I can barely watch. It hurts me. It used to hurt me, but now it doesn't hurt anymore. I also had severe osteoarthritis of the knee. I, I could show some exercises now. One of them is to sit in the lotus position. Of course, you can't do that overnight. It takes two or three years to be able to do that. But when you become more agile, you also have less pain. I'm telling you, every day I think of you once or twice, not anyone putting on my shoes and jogging or trampolining. I always see you in this seat in front of me. How agile you can become again. Although you were once very immobile, it works, not overnight, but it works. It's possible. Much, much more is possible than you think because the body supports you. The body itself has self-healing processes. It wants to be flexible because if it's immobile, the risk of pain is also greater. I'd like to go through the slides because it would be a shame if we didn't show them. This slide comes from a study we're doing at the University of Calgary. You see the minister, Yusuf Hassan Abdi, again. How he, who was in a wheelchair until recently, can now walk and how his joints became more stable. We did this study in Calgary at the university and you can see on the left, on the left side are unstable knees because only the big muscles, especially the big muscles, the outer muscle layers are used when we walk on flat ground. We don't walk balancing. You put one foot in front of the other by tensing the quadriceps muscles and hip flexors. We then let ourselves fall to the ground. Uh, could we maybe show it again? We then let ourselves fall on the ground. And accordingly, the left knee in this model is unstable. 
It weighs forwards and backwards. If you walk balancing like Yusuf Hassan Abdi does on the mat, if you walk balancing your feet, then you have even more small muscles active. We added small springs to the model, and below you can see the forces from the study. So the balloons on the left are sheer forces, harmful forces, and on the right these harmful forces become much smaller. That means the joint becomes more stable. Those are unbelievable pictures, unbelievable. When you see that, these differences, there are massive differences, simply with a balancing walk, because the feet are balancing. What do the health insurance companies say? They, sh they should pay for these shoes. That should actually be prescribed by the doctor. It's a prescription, the cheapest ever. Imagine if there were no more sick people and no more problems. And, by the way, 20% of the health insurance costs are used for orthopedic operations alone. All of this turnover would collapse, or part of that turnover. You'd rather sell insoles, or as a health insurer, they prefer to pay for insoles because the joints and feet then become stiff. And when the feet gets stiff, the whole body becomes stiff. You can see that with us in our latitudes, how stiff and immobile the elderly become. And of course, that's much better for business. Hmm. I'm not saying that it happens consciously, that, that they do it consciously, but it's just a system that is so well established and many doctors are likely to believe that surgery is the only alternative and that you can learn to walk in a new way. Patients often do not even want that because it's much more tedious. It's, of course, easier just to have an operation. Then maybe you'll be a little better for two or three years. But that this implies a relieving posture and that also tissue, connective tissue, fasciae are cut, and that the next operation is already pre-programmed. This is unfortunately often ignored. Still, I really wonder if it's not possible to get a medical license that the doctors are taught to, that you can report on this at medical congresses with these results. Because the scales fall from my eyes when I see that. We are on it. A health insurance campaign is underway. And of course, that is our goal. But that's not easy at all. You can see that in natural medicine. It's similar there. As a health insurer, you first see the costs that you have to cover and not the profit or the savings potential they would have with it. But we already have a few thousand customers who are now participating in this petition, and we are more on the right track with it. The time is up, even though we still have such beautiful slides. I think we'll get through them quickly. We can do that. There is certainly still a lot to say, but we just have to put that in another episode, dear Carl. Well, thank you very much for this first glimpse at osteoarthritis patients, that we have an incredibly great opportunity here, that you can walk pain-free, dear viewers. It is really about you, and it's about all your friends and relatives and those around you. Please be so good, please share this episode with these people who are really plagued with osteoarthritis, with pain when walking. It hurts me every time I come here in my car and see people on the sidewalk really walking in pain. It really hurts. And I've experienced and seen for myself that it doesn't have to be like this. And with these elastic springy soles, with these shoes, you can do so much good for people, for the entire musculoskeletal system. That's why it's a blessing. And that's why Karl Muller is also a hero for me. Thank you very much for this great conversation. All the best. See you another time. And you too. Thank you for watching. See you next time.